I'm Dan Powers. I live down here at Mr. Blake's house. That's Bella, just come up here with the ball. <laughs> Dan's a special breed. The property above mine is Stephen's property, Stephen Lane. And I heard this property went up for sale. So I bought it sight unseen. And I drove down and I pull into the property and I see a little trailer. And I'm like, what the hell is this? And Dan walks out. What's oh, up, I love those uh, hunting pants you got on. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, I lived here when, when he bought the property. And Dan's like, who are you? And I said, I'm Blake, who are you? And Dan's like, well, I live on this property. I said, well, I own this property. And Dan's face kind of went red and he's like, well, are you kicking me off the property? And I was like, well, what can you do for me? Well, I maintain the yard um, and their friends next door as well. And then when he needs help building things like, like the deck we're sitting on, the, the bulkhead we have here, we all pitch in. And uh, everybody's out there busting butt to save some money. You know, so we we work everything together. When when Blake's off in, in New Orleans, I take care of the chickens and the, everything else that needs to be done. In hindsight, I would have paid four times the price if I knew Dan came with the property. Can't say enough good stuff about Dan. Good dude. Fun to be around. We had a banger of a hunt on public land in the last episode. And now we all have to get to work to process these ducks for dinner tonight. The birds are almost done. We want to get them prepared for tonight's dinner, which is somewhat like a barbecue duck. And uh, so we're going to spatchcock these. And what that means, I've basically taken the backbone out of it from the tail to the neck. And I just removed that. And Michael's over there rinsing all the um, different heart and lung shots out of it. And then getting any last feathers. And what I'll end up doing is just breaking like that, then taking my scissors down the breastplate. And then you have the birds that can be cooked like this instead of whole. I mean, they're still whole birds, same bird, but cooking them in half like this, one will give it a nice consistent cook and also kind of um, speed up the cook that's what we want. We want the bones underneath to kind of insulate all that good meat. So while it smokes, the bones insulate, it roasts, it smokes, it gets colored, it gets delicious, and then we'll be ready to eat. These birds will soak in brine while we set out on an evening hog hunt. We've decided to divide and conquer so that we can cover more ground. Stephen Lang will be captaining the tower boat, with Stephen Bateman and I acting as shooters. While Blake, Jay, and Junior are taking the Reno skiff out to a few mud flats where Blake has seen some hogs. Sitting here in the tower boat, waiting for a little piggy to pop out so we can make some bacon out of them. Right there, there's a pig right there. Steven. I see him. Stay still, stay still. Before I can pull the trigger on my rifle, Steven takes a shot with buckshot. Damn, I had him right in my crosshairs. That was a big boy. Yeah, it was. It looks like a miss, but regardless, Steven gets out on the bank to look for a blood trail. In the meantime, we're gonna check in with Blake, Jay, and Junior see if they've had any success.
Blake and Jay, on the other hand, connect on an extra fat sow that is destined to be excellent table fare. What you doing here? Just opening up, or opening up the chest cavity, getting the guts out, get her on the water as fast as we can to cool her off. Just cutting along the belly, making sure to not penetrate the gut. A lot of fat on this pig. See what fat? We were going down a different canal than John Paul and them, and it was out at the end of a little flat. Shot it with the buckshot. A lot of times you use buckshot to shoot these things. And uh, now we gotta get her gutted. And we gotta get her in the water and get her cooled off as quick as we can. Good thing about the river water, it's about 55 degrees right now. Well, with as hot of a day as it is like now, you put them in the river and they cool off. Plus, just leaving them out on the boat, they'll get hot in the sun and they'll just stay hot. You can cool them off and that's river water easy. You can leave it like that, go shoot another one. And that's Dennis pig hunting right there, boys. Man, that was fun. Seeing both them pigs on that flat and shooting them. Yeah, that's a thrill. We in a living in his finest. Fresh hog meat, be cooking it up soon. No dice. Couldn't find them? Nah. Ton of trails back there and fresh, fresh tracks too. Did you find a blood? No. Nope. Uh, all right so didn't work out for us it worked out for the other group and that's cool with us we'll better clean those hogs and get a lot of meat from them we're really losing light now so blake's right down the canal we're gonna meet up with him head back to the camp and start cooking dinner there is no pig down here that the meat is bad i've killed a lot i've never had a bad one what kind of pigs did you say these were? Russian boars. I don't know if they're true Russian boars, but they're boars. They're not feral pigs like what they have in Texas. In Texas, they get the ones that have like spots and colors and white, pink, whatever here. They're all black like that. Every once in a while, you'll get one with like some white feet or like a white spot, but I think it's just a random thing. Cool animals. I love them. I love shooting them. I love eating them. I don't want to get rid of them. I just want to kill enough, you know? But I always want them to be here. I got some pigs. Yeah. We're back from the hog hunt, and while the crew ices down hogs, I'm gonna cook a little dinner. Tonight, I got barbecue ducks. We have all the different species of ducks that we shot this morning, right here in this simple brine. Now, when it comes to this brine, as you can see, it's got a a redness to it and that's because the salt and that water is pulling out some of that blood from the duck but in exchange it's given back that salt and water and that's really going to create a very juicy succulent breast and thigh meat there smoked duck is actually a pretty straightforward preparation and a great way to prepare whole birds for large groups of friends once we spatchcock the birds they went into a basic brine of salt water and brown sugar for a few hours from there, it's really up to you on what rub and sauce you want to use. The most important part of this recipe is to not overcook the breast portion of your duck. With a meat probe, I'm looking for an internal temperature between 130 and 135 degrees. 
The legs and thighs of a spatchcock duck aren't quite tender when the breast reaches its ideal temp. But as long as you aren't scared to get your hands dirty and eat the meat right off the bone, then these morsels make more than just a tasty bite. Of course, you can always separate the legs and thigh and use them for any number of recipes like gumbos, stews, and fricassees. The ducks are done, the crew is fed, and we gotta get refueled for our big day of duck hunting tomorrow. Some of our Duck Camp Dinners crew from Gibson is here, also with their first Venice hunt. I'm hoping we get another day like we had today. Till then, it's time to get some rest and get to shooting in the morning. That four mile per hour breeze we had yesterday, it puts a ripple on the water. Like now we got literally dead still water with no movement. Today is offshore fishing weather. Tomorrow is offshore fishing weather. That's why we're going offshore fishing tomorrow. Promise you two duck hunters. <laughs> I'll take them, I'll take them. All right, we're about 10 minutes to shooting time. Um, we widened the spread a little bit, so we create a bigger hole for these ducks to come in. Um, but like Blake said, there's no wind, so they can come from any direction. Our, our hope is that they kind of are attracted by this low motion on the edge of our decoys and light right in this hole so we can all get three, three good shots at them. Um, yeah, I mean, we had a good day yesterday. It's gonna be hard to beat that one. Um, but we're, you know, we know where the ducks are. We know they're here. And uh, it's just a matter of them coming into our decoys. On the left, they come. Yep, I see him. Three of them. Coming Shoot on our left. Bird. Kill him. Is that a pintail? Yep, Drake. It looks like it. It looked like three Drake pintail to me. Watch, her, watch her have a hen. I'm gonna have to eat my words. Good girl. It's not the prettiest of drakes, but it'll count. We broke the ice, boys. Right here, right here. Oh, right, see you. Make sure it's not a hen pintail. Kill it. Kill it, kill it, straight up. Damn good. Nice shot. Great up. Yep. Right here, right here, right here. Kill him, great up. Hands. Hand pin. Hand pin. Hand pin. <sighs> Being picky over here. Same one coming in. Where? Small duck. Small ducks eat good too. Did you see? Did you see more rice? <laughs> Look, I'm just being picky. You want to shoot it? I have at it. One duck closer to breakfast. Watch it! Watch it! That's pentail. Make sure to pick the Drake out. Straight out front. The pintail population has, has declined year after year after year after year, and hens lay eggs, so it's better to shoot the drakes, let the hens pass so they can have more chances to have another brood. Shoot them drakes from my Instagram, you know? Yeah. Juice don't have Instagram. Yeah, y'all follow me. He no social media juice. I got WhatsApp. <laughs> and, and Venmo. <laughs> shot. Oh yes, sir. Pretty male. Oh yeah. Beautiful. Oh, mature Drake. You know. Watch this single. Oh, it's a little pool, dude. 
the poo do? Get over here, poo do. Watch this gray duck again. This gray duck's coming right over the top of us, right over our left shoulder. Ready? I didn't hit it, huh? Yeah, you hit it. It just fell after I shot. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, that don't make sense. <laughs> Watch right here. Let's see what this is. What is this? Hell yeah. yeah. Sweet. They, they came in perfect. All right, we put a goal for 10 o'clock to be out of here. Flock of gray ducks came in. Light in decoys, two are down. That means we're getting the decoys, loading out, heading back to the camp for some breakfast. Payal. That's how it's done. So we're back at the camp. The boat's cleaned up. The decoys are picked up. But we got to start thinking about dinner. And Blake has uh, agreed to share one of his family recipes with us. And Blake, I've been thinking about this dish for months and months. Mostly just intrigued by the name of Gucci's Goose Stew. So originally my, my, we, my camp was in Polytown and my grandma was from Polytown. And uh, you go spend a long cold day in the winter duck hunting, goose hunting, whatever. And you come back and Gucci would be teeing up a stew that had been on the pot for six, eight hours. The longer the better. So the best thing to have after you're done cleaning your duck is a nice hot stew yeah. over rice. I agree and, with that. Uh, that's what we're going to try and do. Uh, I'd have to dig and ask my mom, but I think Gucci got her nickname was because she had Gucci luggage. We're making Gucci's goose soup, obviously. This was her house in Paul Town. Papa built it. Gucci was in Paul Town, Louisiana, a water town where, where are you even going to go? She'd go up to town and go to the beauty parlor once a week, but she always had Gucci luggage, so we always called her Gucci. She'd always go up to town in New Orleans, go to the Mount Leon Hotel, and she'd strut right on in there with a nice Gucci luggage. But, man, that goose stew is something else. Eating it gives you all the feels, all the memories, and um, Gucci's something else, too. Hopefully we're making her proud. I like that brown butter, Blake. I like, I like that, that you're cooking in brown butter. That's one of my favorite fats to cook with. Come to find out, there's actually a sizable population of blue-faced snow geese that migrate down to Venice every year. Blake had some stored away in the freezer from last season, just so we could cook Blake's generational family recipe, Gucci's Goose Stew. Trying to get it all good and seasoned up as best you can. I'm gonna turn the butter up real hot. Really all you're doing is just trying to render the fat out of the meat so you can get some goose fat in here. And then we're gonna brown the legs. After we brown the legs, we're gonna take it all out, make a roux. And once we made a roux, I'm gonna add it all back in and let it eat. Let it eat, I like it. This recipe is a perfect lesson for all the snow goose hunters out there, so listen up. Snow goose breasts are delicious, but if you aren't cooking the legs, you're missing out. The ligaments and sinew in the legs adds a richness to this dish through the bird's natural gelatin. The marrow inside of the leg bones adds a depth to this sauce, which can't be imitated. These legs create a lip-smacking gravy, and you'll never want to pass up a goose leg again. Right now we're just skinning out the hogs that we shot yesterday afternoon. We've already taken the belly meat off. We're about to put it on the smoker. 
Get down to the front shoulders now. Just quarter it up, gonna put her on ice, make some fresh sausage. Gucci's Goose Stew is simmering and the pork belly is in the smoker. We're gonna kick back and enjoy the sunset while dinner cooks. For dessert, we're eating wild boar belly burnt ends from the hogs that we shot today. Jay has removed the belly meat and I have seasoned it with some of my favorite barbecue rub. With the camp chef set at 250 degrees, my goal is to smoke this belly until it is 90% done. Once I achieve that, I cut the belly up into large chunks, add a bit more seasoning, and a layer of barbecue sauce to the meat morsels before they go back into the smoker to finish cooking. This is a common burnt end technique, usually seen when preparing brisket in towns like Kansas City. The sauce and added rub caramelizes on the meat, causing a burnt effect, which is crucial to achieving the perfect mix of buttery rich flesh with smoky, sweet, and salty exteriors. The goose do is done. Most, of, most people add carrots, potatoes, extras to the stews, but the real importance of this stew is it's strictly meat. This is strictly goose meat. Put it over a little rice, and that's what's important. You get a little pile of meat like that, put it over rice, and you're good to go. All right, Gucci's Goose Stew is done. This looks incredible. We have a long day of inshore and offshore fishing tomorrow. We're up at 4.30 in the morning. Hopefully, We'll catch some fish tomorrow. We will catch some. Getting ready for an awesome Friday out in the water. I like me some rice and gravy, me. The early mornings and late nights of Venice are catching up with the crew and I, but we can't quite rest yet. The weather is calling for the perfect offshore fishing day tomorrow, and the water is ideal for pulling baits and search for some of the best fish in the Gulf. the next episode of Duck Camp Dinners, we'll take things offshore. We visit the last water town in Louisiana, and Christmas comes early at the Chivo Rodeo. Merry Christmas, okay guys, Merry Christmas. Shoot straight and come hungry. <laughs>